Did you know that you probably don't need to upgrade your computer, even if some of the parts are really old? It won't actually make any significant difference on your PC. And then there are some cheap parts that if you upgrade them, your computer will be a lot faster. And there are some parts that you might want to go overkill on because that might be the part that makes or breaks your PC when you decide to upgrade it in the future. Well, we'll get into that and a lot more in this video. We'll take a look at all the parts that the computer has and if you want to build a PC, this guide will clear your head a lot when it comes to choosing your parts. If you want to upgrade, this guide will tell you what you need to upgrade if you want that performance. Because depending on what you do, you might need to upgrade different things. And even if you just want to buy a computer, you will at least be able to understand this description so you don't get scammed. So the parts that are more important when building your PC are the CPU, GPU, motherboard and power supply. Things that are not as important are the RAM, storage and gaming peripherals. These are the display, keyboard, mouse and headset, just so we are clear. And things that are not as important but can be dependent on your system are the cooling system and case and operating system. The cooling system can be really important if you are going to build a really high-end computer but we will get into that later. Now first we have the CPU and you might think of it as the brain of your computer. Now here you want to spend like 10 to 20% of your budget and don't forget this, I will give you a tip. Before you buy a CPU just look when was it made. For example Intel makes CPUs and they go in model numbers like i3, i5, i7 and i9. And it is true, the bigger the number, the better the performance, but honestly, if you don't know how to look at it, it can be really confusing. Let's be honest, an i3 of this generation will massively outperform a 6 year old i7 for example, so always look at the generation, and you can do that by looking at the numbers after the model. And it's not like an old CPU will be a bottleneck, but it can. For example, if you are a gamer, it might not hold you back, but if you are editing, you will need the best CPU you can get, so if you are upgrading, unless it's really old, it might not be a bottleneck, but if you are planning on buying, keep in mind that there are new mid-range CPUs that are a lot better than old high-end CPUs. But now let's look at what CPU you need. Well, if you are going to buy a mid-range PC and you don't want to spend over $1000 for your system or your budget is around that price for your whole system, then an i3 of this generation with some performance scores should be just fine. If you want an i5 for some extra performance, they are not that much more expensive and they have a bit more performance. But don't go for an i7 unless you're building a mid to high-end PC and you want a really good GPU. And now since I have mentioned the GPU, what is it and do you need it? And when it comes to what you need, well, for a PC you don't actually need a GPU. You can get a CPU with integrated graphics and you will be just fine without it. Your PC will work, but now if you are going to play games or if you are going to work on your PC, maybe you like video editing, coding games or any kind of real work. Well now it goes from unnecessary, not even worth buying, to the most important part of your system, even more than your CPU, even though the CPU is the brain. This is more important, it will help you in your day to day life more and honestly it is the most expensive part of your PC. So in my opinion spend more than what you think you need on this part because unlike some of the other parts this cannot be upgraded. I mean you can upgrade it but if you buy a $200 GPU and you are fine now but after 2 years if you are upgrading you are throwing $200 on the trash unlike storage or RAM where you can just add more. So. I would say don't spend as much money on storage, case or RAM and just buy the best mid-range GPU you can afford so you don't have to change it in the future. And buy a GPU with minimum 8 gigs. but honestly I wouldn't recommend going under 12 gigs if you want it to be a bit more future proof. And as for what the numbers of the GPU mean, well if you are buying from Nvidia for example a 3090 that means that you are buying the best from the 30 series, a 4090 that means that it is even better. So the first two numbers mean the series, basically how old are they, 40 the newest, 30 is the last series and so on. And the two last numbers mean the higher the better basically, for the series I mean, 90 meaning the best, 80 a bit worse and so on. You want the 3060 12 gig or the 3070 or something mid range from the 40 series. If you are buying a mid range PC they can run almost any game. And even in the future with lower settings games should run just fine, but keep in mind if you already own a PC. And if your PC can't run games or if the games look really bad, that probably means that you have a really old GPU and even if this is the most expensive part to upgrade, don't upgrade anything else because other things will not help you. It's bad but you need to upgrade this. And now the motherboard. And the motherboard is there just to connect stuff. Now here just buy something that is compatible and something that is new so you can at least upgrade down the line and you know that it is reliable. They all are most of the time but check if it is compatible with the CPU as well as the GPUs that you might want to upgrade down the line. 
just so if you change your mind or if you upgrade it in the future you can just pop off the old gpu and insert the new one easy and simple nothing more and nothing less it connects stuff so it is not as important as the gpu or the cpu now the power supply and it just delivers power so why did i say that it is important well there is a really good reason for that you don't want to be stingy when buying your power supply it can fry your whole system if it is bad just buy it from a legit website a legit company and buy it new because honestly you don't want your 500 dollars gpu getting fried because you thought you got a good deal on a cheap power supply you don't want that and one advice i would give you never buy a power supply that is enough for your system always buy one that can deliver a lot more power because of the parts that you will probably need to upgrade to in the future for example if you want to play games or do some serious work on your pc you will need a better gpu and the better the gpu the more power it will consume so if you get a better gpu when you upgrade you won't need to throw your old power supply and honestly it is better because if your gpu and cpu are overclockable if you ever do that you will need that power so even if you don't upgrade you might need it now that was the complicated stuff so if you got that the other things are even simpler now we have ram it's just a random memory you will need it for the browser and the programs that run on the background mostly so here you want to go with 16 gigs and right now if you are on a budget you should go with ddr4 ram and there are some other things to consider like the speed and stuff like that but in my opinion always go with a legit brand and you should be fine now if you want the fastest ram you can just get ddr5 ram it is the newest but you don't actually need it and when it comes to how much you need well right now you need 16 gigs of ram and buy two 8 gig sticks of ram don't buy a single stick of 16 gigs it helps a bit and if you think that you need more get 32 gigs of ram it is not that much more expensive but like i said if you are in a budget in the future you can just add more ram just look at the motherboard they support up to four sticks of ram you can just upgrade whenever you want and now let's move on to storage well you definitely need it your PC won't power on without it. But what kind of storage do you need? Well, the first thing is to buy it from a legit brand. And there are two main different kind of storages. HDD and SSD. And you don't want the HDD. You don't want it as your secondary drive. You definitely don't want it as your primary. So just buy an SSD and the two. It is great, reliable and fast. You don't need anything faster. You can get SATA if you want to. And there are SSDs that have higher speeds. And people market them as game changing. But unless you are moving extremely large files from one drive to another every day. You don't need it. Even if you are a gamer you still don't need anything faster. And when it comes to how much you need. Well 1TB is a good start. If you want to cheap out a bit you can get away with with 500 gigs of storage you can have a game or two there and you can have all the programs you need but one terabyte as primary and adding to that as time goes on is way better and it's just like ram if you want to buy a better gpu definitely get 500 gig storage but get a better gpu in the end of the day you can just add more storage to your pc it is not complicated to do that and if you already have a reliable ssd then upgrading it won't actually make your computer significantly faster so add more ssd as time goes on and don't forget if your pc still works on hard disk drives changing that to an ssd might just be the biggest upgrade you can do to your computer and they are really cheap right now the only the reason they weren't recommended in the past it's because of their price now let's talk about gaming peripherals so how is this important or should this be more important than the things that i have previously mentioned it is kind of important but it depends on what you need and what you like it's completely based on personal preferences for example your display if you are a gamer you will need a faster screen a display with more fps will help you a lot but if you are a video editor you don't need that you will need a color accurate 4k display that is what i mean now the same goes for the keyboard i mean everyone wants a mechanical keyboard but there are different ones some require more force for the buttons to be pushed some are a lot easier but you don't get that click some people even like quiet keyboards it depends on the person that's what i mean so just think of what you like go on a store try them i mean if you click on a keyboard in a store no one will stop you check them try them and make your decision but like i said go to a store that sells keyboards mouses monitors and look at them so you have a better understanding of what you are buying now let's talk about pc cases and cooling systems now we will talk about them both because depending on the case you choose you kind of choose your cooling system as well if your case doesn't have space for fans you will not have fans it is that simple but do you need good cooling 
And does it make a difference? Well, if you have a mid-range PC, let's say for example you have an i3 with an RTX 3060, well, that is a really good system, but you don't need to spend a lot of money on your cooling because your system doesn't produce that much heat. And on the other hand, if you have an RTX 4090 with an i9, you will need a water cooling if you want to get the best performance that is so it depends but if you want to buy a mid-range pc just get a case with good airflow and they are not expensive you can look at other people's videos just so you can make your decision faster and safer and now we have the operating system and you will either go with windows or linux and you want to go with windows and if you are in a dilemma then my friend you know a lot more than me about linux so go and see another video but linux is more complicated it takes more time to get used to so if you are a beginner if you don't want to mess with the operating system just go with windows it makes life a lot easier now there are a lot more things to talk about when it comes to pcs but i just wanted to make this quick video so you at least know what you are seeing when you go shopping for a pc but don't forget to look at the parts and see if they are compatible there are apps where you can check that apps like the pc part picker and there are other apps as well and just to be safe you can google the parts individually and check if they are compatible with each other most of the time that shouldn't be a problem but why not better safe than sorry believe me you don't want to buy parts just to figure out that they are not compatible with each other and if you are confused by anything feel free to ask me in the comments down below if you need help with anything regarding computers feel free to ask me i reply to every single comment and don't forget to hit that like button if you like the video and if you want to see more tech related videos just like this make sure to subscribe this was ray and i will catch you in the next one